Bones. <laughs> Zombies! They're everywhere! Everybody's making a zombie movie these days. And one way to tell a zombie is from their eyes, right? Well, maybe blood and lost limbs, but the eyes really have it. If you can do something with the eyes, then you've got a zombie. So I got a call from a filmmaker and he said, you know what, contact lenses are expensive. Can we track the eyes in After Effects and replace them with zombie eyes? So I took, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes time and I did it. Let me show you the result right here. So obviously a before and after, that's me before on the left. And I've tracked the eyes and I used Mocha and I'll show you exactly how I did that in Mocha. And then we brought them in and composited them in After Effects. So you see it works pretty good. So let's go in and start with Mocha. So I just recorded myself. Uh, this was Canon 5D footage, but any video footage works. And I just wanted to show you the final result here. When I click on one of these eyes, you'll actually see these little uh, green triangles or diamonds show up and they're extra keyframes. So you have a choice when you're creating the shape to either use a Bezier pen tool like you have in Photoshop and Illustrator or a B-spline tool. Um, I don't think there's any difference in the accuracy of the tracking, it's just what you're used to. I like Illustrator pen tools so that's what I used. And there's a button over here to track forward and to track backward. It's really important to note that if you've ever done tracking in After Effects, uh, After Effects can't redo its tracking very well. So if I tracked something from here to here and it didn't work well and I went to the middle and said, can you retrack it? It's not gonna work. In After Effects, it creates too many keyframes and too many problems. But Mocha is not that way. In fact, when I had trouble with the eye, I could track backwards and forwards, forwards and backwards and fine tune it and it would interpolate all the changes. What I found was that when it tracked the eye from uh, the first frame all the way to the last frame, it did pretty good, but there was occasionally a time when it would wander. So it would be right on the eye, but I would see some of it just noodle to the left or the right, moving up and down. So all I had to do at that point is to just come in here and I would be working you know, pretty tight inside here and grabbing my move tool and you just click and if I put this over, you see there's no keyframe in there. If I click and drag, it instantly makes a keyframe. So I would be correcting for any of the places that it wasn't accurate. And you'll notice I had to do it a few times but not many times. Actually, it took me less than 20 minutes to track both eyes. Okay, let's zoom out. And oh yeah, I wanted to show you how to draw that around there. Well, just like um, working in Illustrator, you can, let me just grab this and delete it. Okay. And grab my B-spline tool and you're basically clicking and you're dragging and moving points off of there. And because the eye is, you know, fairly predictable, by the way, I just right clicked uh, to finish that off. Um, if you're used to Illustrator or, or Photoshop or uh, After Effects, you're used to getting that little circle symbol when you're joining the, the first and the last and you're pinning them together. Just right click on the last one and it will uh, combine them. So once it's set up like this, you can begin to track one track forward or multiple tracks or multiple keyframes forward and you can see it's tracking right there. So that's how I started to track. I got all the... Uh, points going well. Let me just zoom out here. And down to the bottom right, export shape data. When I click on this, I can either export the selected layer, which I did separately, left eye and then right eye. And I'm, you're exporting it as a Mocha shape data for AE. This is a special new mat that was added in After Effects CS5. I could copy it to the clipboard and save it. And when I come into After Effects and you uh, paste that, in there. So my original uh, track was here and you paste it, you get the new um, eyes and let me just turn a few things off show you. There's the right eye comp and there's the left eye. So these are just new matte effects that were added um, in CS5 and they take the name from the shape that you created inside Mocha. So it makes sense to do that. But you'll notice they're really, really sharp. 
and I added refine matte. So on the right hand side, refine matte. This is um, a part of Roto Brush. So if you're used to using it for Roto Brush, you can use it all on its own. So basically, these are two floating masks. Uh, and if you turn them off, what you'll actually see is my whole face here. So I'm, I'm not creating eyes. I'm just masking out the area where my eyes are. And then with Refine Matte, I can add a smoothness, feather, and choke. So you can really play with, with the outside edges of the eyes. And because the eyes are absolutely the same, you want the same feather around the whole thing, you can choke and feather, and it's going to be doing that to the whole thing. Um, if you do this inside Mocha, Mocha has a really powerful way of changing the feather value between uh, vertices. So you can have a point here and a point here and a point here and different values. I didn't need that. I wanted uh, universal control over all of them. Okay, you might wonder why I have two comps here. And there's a reason for that. If you mask out a shape, so if I just copied um, my uh, background layer and added the shapes inside there. If I tried to add the exposure, hue, saturation, and glow on top of that, it wouldn't work. You have to pre-compose the shape eye mask layer into a comp. So just Control Shift C or Command Shift C on the Mac, it sticks it in a new comp that I called New Eyes Comp. Okay, and it moves everything in there. So the Masking is occurring in this new eyes comp. The composite is occurring in the eyes animation. So here's what we did. I was playing around with a little glow. Um, let's just zoom in and look at what's going on. So the very first thing I did was I changed the exposure. And what you're noticing with the exposure setting is it's keeping the, the crispness of the eye. I'm, I'm not removing the uh, specular reflection that's inside there, and I'm also not uh, getting rid of the shadow. What you don't want is perfect white eyes because then they don't look, look natural. You need to take what's there and affect it. I noticed that when I added exposure, it kept too much of the color of my eye. So a quick hue saturation value removes some of the saturation, not all of it, and you end up with this natural looking animation inside here. And you'll notice that I have a, a little rim around the outside of my eye. When I first tried this, I made the full iris completely white. And because I have white uh, of my eye and the white of the iris, it didn't read properly. I didn't really see the eye moving around. That's where refined matte comes in. Refined matte, you choke it, you feather it a bit. All of a sudden, I had this perfect little outline around my eye and it just clicked. It looked amazing. So I was just playing around with some glow inside here. So uh, you could start to add you know, glows on here and, and do whatever you want. Basically, you have these floating masks moving around. And the final result looks pretty darn good, pretty darn convincing. Uh, you don't need those contact lenses. You now have a mask, and, or sorry, you now have uh, zombie eyes. We're tracking inside Mocha. We're compositing inside After Effects. Now you can go get all your zombie looks on and get your zombies going. But, you know, there's no such thing as a real zombie. <laughs>